Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox recording here to tell you why your guitar tone sucks. But does it really? Let's discuss. So before I dive into today's tutorial, I just wanna let you know that so much of your guitar tone when using amp sims comes from using a solid impulse response. In other words, an impulse response that was recorded properly at the source. If you're using amp sims, I wanna make your life a million times easier, and I'm offering you right now free access to my guitar impulse response, Octopack. The Octopack comes with eight impulse responses, four different microphones, two different mic placements per microphone. These IRs are completely raw, but again, they were captured right at the source. So just drop them into your amp sim and get right to crafting metal guitar tones that are good at the source that don't need a ton of EQ. All right, so today's video is pretty unique for this channel. I had an email subscriber email me with an excellent question. He was struggling with his guitar tone and he was nice enough to send me some of his actual files, both his amp sim tone that was printed and the DI track. So I shot him a custom tutorial to dive deep and explain to him why his guitar tone might not be working out or sounding the way that he wants it to sound and what he could do to improve his guitar tone if there was even an issue in the first place. If you're struggling with guitar tone, specifically if you're using amp sims in your home studio, you're gonna wanna watch this entire tutorial. I think you might be surprised by what I reveal toward the end. Let's dive in. Let me just straighten out my microphone. This is completely live. I just got your email and I was so compelled by it that I've decided to shoot you a custom tutorial right here, right now, um, because what you mentioned is something that so many of us struggle with, including myself in the past, especially guitar players. I'm a guitar player, so I know exactly what you're talking about. I have been there. Um, obsessing over tone, obsessing over fizziness, all these fun things, right, that so many of us uh, think we're struggling with, when in reality, it's not really as much of an issue as we think, right? And I wanna really break down in real time, completely live right here for you, um, what might be happening with your DI tracks and your guitar tracks. So let me read your email. Hello, Bobby, I'm a beginner in guitar recording. I try playing and recording with an amp sim and I can't compare the sound. Meaning, I guess you mean you can't compare it to like a live, real guitar sound. But to me, my guitar sound on amp sims doesn't sound great. I do not know what I'm doing wrong. I have a Jackson USA Solos with Seymour Duncan SH6 pickups, which is plugged straight into my SSL2 Plus interface. That's a very nice interface, so you don't have any issues there. Uh, on the instrument input, which is the high impedance input, and you're playing into Cubase. All solid stuff, dude. Attached, you can find a short DI, uh, which is not clipping, as you mentioned in your tutorial. Also, you will find the same short DI through the Roots Free Ampson plugin, which is a great plugin. The guitar is tuned to E flat. DI is recorded at 44.1 16-bit. Thanks for any help you could provide. Dominique, let me open up one of my productions, and I'm gonna bring your guitar into one of my productions and compare it to see just how different it is if it's different at all. Recording through Amp Sims. Okay, that was the same tutorial that I had uh, up on YouTube last week. So I wanna really compare, because that's the same Amp Sim that you're using, I'm using in this production. Perfect, okay, great. Those are my guitars. So here is your DI. Oh, you exported stereo files. You wanna export mono files. If you ever work with a mix engineer, Always export mono files, not stereo, but we can still do this test, no problem. So let's take a listen to your distorted guitar track. I just wanna make sure it's not super loud. Uh, here are mine, that's my output. I'm just gonna bring it down. Let's hear your guitar tone. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna be honest, that tone sounds great. Let's hear your DI now. And just for fun, I'm actually gonna stick the sim, the same sim that you're using on this track to see the difference between your tone and my tone. One impulse response, you could tell the 57 is a little off center from the center of the cone, and yours sounds like it's more on center, but it works. Your tone sounds great, man. There's nothing wrong with your tone. That is a solid guitar tone. I could easily use that in a mix. But there's a reason why I made this tutorial, right? I wanna to reveal to you why you might be thinking that your guitar tone doesn't work. Let's take a listen to the same amp sim 
uh, in a full mix of mine. Again, it's the exact same amp sim you're using. The only difference, right? Now I do have a little bit of compression on here, but I'm actually gonna EQ and compress your um, guitars in the same way, just to show you how close they really are. And in some ways yours might even be better. Uh, let me see my EQ settings here. I'm just gonna roll off all the bottom. This is a typical uh, EQ I'd use within my mix. Very subtle. For me, I'd rather just get the guitar tone right at the source than over EQ it. And your guitar tone does not need much EQ, if any. Tighten up some of the palm mutes. <laughs> Sounds great. All right, uh, let's listen to my guitar tone in my mix. Let's check it out. Then I'm gonna solo my guitars. So those are my guitars using the exact same amp sim that you're using, right? Let's now listen to your guitar. Okay, now if you're not experienced and you're sort of new to recording, you might still think these sound worlds apart, right? They're really not. Your guitar tone is actually really, really solid. There are two things that are giving you the impression that it doesn't sound that great. Number one, you're listening to a mono guitar up the center. When you listen to a pro record or even a pro mix like the one that I just played for you, even if it's the exact same DI and the exact same amp sims, if it's in stereo and double tracked and double tracked well, the perceived tone is gonna be so much better, right? That's something that confuses so many of us when we start out. You might think that a pro record is using all this fancy gear and maybe they are, but then you might hear a local band that's using the same gear or even cheaper gear than what you're using and they sound phenomenal right comes down to two simple things double tracking hard panning right so taking that same guitar tone and double tracking the performance will make it sound huge in and of itself that one simple technique right and also the thing that none of us like to hear making sure you're tracking super tight and editing your guitar tracks the guitar tracks that you hear in my mix are edited I've gone through and any spot that might be slightly sloppy or not tight, I make sure it's tight. Now, you do not need to make your guitar sound like the Terminator is playing. You don't have to make them so tight that they sound fake. Just pocketing them and making sure that they are falling either dead on with the drums or slightly behind the drums. So if we zoom into the transients on my guitars, look at all of the pick attacks. They're either dead on with the grid or a little behind, but they're not perfect, right? Like, check it out. Like this isn't perfect. That bump, 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 that's not perfect, but it's pocketed, okay? When you have guitar tracks that one is pushing and one is pulling and it's ahead of the drums and behind the drums and there's string noise, that's when the guitar tone doesn't sound right, even if technically the guitar tone like the one you're using is solid at the source. So I just wanted to quickly demonstrate and make this video for you. Your guitar tone is great. Again, to your, you know, because you're new, you might hear that tone and be comparing it to what you're hearing on albums and thinking it's not that great when it actually is. You just have to double track your guitars and make sure your performances are super tight. And then obviously when it's in the context of a mix like this. It sounds impressive, right? But my guitar tone sounds pretty much exactly the same as yours when you really break it down. Make sure you're playing super tight, and if it's not super tight, edit your guitars so they're pocketed. That's the first thing. And then just double track your guitars and make sure the rest of your mix is well balanced and solid. And you will end up with a guitar tone that comes across as sounding great. Because guitar tone is not this simple thing. It's the whole big picture that makes your guitar tone sound great. Dominique, again, thank you so much for your email. I normally don't do this, but I was really moved by what you had to say in your email because it's something that I used to struggle with and it used to drive me insane, dude. I used to spend years, I'm not kidding, years of my life obsessing over this until it finally just clicked into place once I interned at a bigger studios and, and noticed that like a lot of times when I'd hear soloed guitar tones on pro records in a mix, they weren't that great. It's just the overall mix that makes them sound 
great. So hopefully this helps, man, and uh, keep me posted on your future productions, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. So as you can see, Dominique's guitar tone was great. He just wasn't used to tracking his guitar in stereo, and also he wasn't used to the process of editing. I'm telling you, when you listen to pro records, you have no idea how much editing is actually taking place on those records. You're hearing the guitars in context of the rest of a balance mix. If you isolate any guitar track and just pan it up to center, it's not going to sound right. That's why people always ask me about panning their guitar center. And for the most part, a loud guitar up the center that's distorted and heavy, in my opinion, doesn't really sound right. In my experience, it can work in a mix if it's very, very low and subtle. So I'm curious to know, is this an issue that you face? Do you always think that your guitar tone doesn't sound right? No matter what you do, no matter what EQ you use or compression you use, do you feel that your amp sim tones are just lackluster and pale in comparison when you compare them to your favorite records? Let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you've been up to in your home studio. And again, you can download my free Impulse Response Octopack. You get eight free solid Impulse Responses that were captured right at the source, two different mic placements per microphone. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. Until next time, happy guitar recording.